Okay, we're back. We're live the one o'clock block here on a given Tuesday with Rabbi Yitro Krasnjanski on Community Matters. We have much to report. It's a chock-a-block day for news in the Jewish community. Uh, welcome back to the show, Rabbi. <clears throat> Thank you, Jay. It's a pleasure to be here, as always. Well, let's talk first about uh, the hot copy on Israel. Today was the election day in Israel, um, right. and, uh, and the, the day in Israel would have been done. I'm not sure they fully counted yet, but what does it look like? Uh, from what I just saw on my way in, is that the right block, the right leaning block of, uh, of, of uh, parties carried the day. So that means uh, Bibi uh, Netanyahu yeah. is, uh, he won the, the day. Right. Yeah, that means it's going to be Likud, which is the Likud right wing. Party. Yeah, which is uh, very good for the security of Israel and peace in the region. Well, we will, he ran a very aggressive campaign, I know. We heard about that. Well, he had to defend himself from very aggressive uh, uh, efforts to unrail him, to derail his. All right, we're going to hear more about that in the news tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be all over the newspapers and everywhere tomorrow. So uh, let's go to let's go to the second point. I really wanted to talk with you. So yes, yes, I shouldn't say yesterday. Sunday, Sunday yes. afternoons, Sunday what the seventh, seventh. seventh okay. um, for your invitation, I went down to the ceremony you had at the synagogue on Atkinson um, to see what was going on with the two new Torahs that you have to replace the two Torahs that were stolen a year ago. And they were really good looking Torahs, by the way. And they, oh, the whole thing was so good, so beautiful. And, and, and I might add that uh, it was very touching to participate in, in writing the letters at the bottom you had a scribe there. Uh, he must have come from New York, maybe? Yes. He was, he was really <laughs> a fine gentleman, and he was so good at it. Um, and so, um, that was impressive. The food is always good, by the way. At Chabad of Hawaii, the food is always good. I know the Rebbetzin has a lot to do with that. Uh, and finally, the sense of Simcha's Torah, of happiness with the Torah, was pervasive. You had a lot of people showed up. And then the coup de grace was when you went out into Atkinson with the chuppah, the, the tent, the canopy, the canopy over the, the two Torahs. Was one out there or two? I don't remember. Two out there, and the, the two that the two new ones, yeah, and um, and uh, the people were dancing up a storm, and the music and the dance, and people were so happy and involved and engaged. It was really hit, hit you in the heart how how the, the congregation came together from all walks, including our friend Josh Green. He was there dancing yeah. with one of the two Torahs. That was really something. But it was a it was a beautiful thing you set up, Rabbi. I must say. Well, thank you, Jay. And, you know, uh, Torah celebration in general strikes a very, very uh, deep chord uh, within the Jewish community and friends of the Jewish community. The Torah uh, actually is at the heart of Judaism. The Torah, by the way, is the Hebrew word for the uh, Bible, the Testament, the Old Testament. And in the Jewish tradition, uh, a Torah is a, is a scroll, and it's written... Uh, with ink on parchment, with a feather, by the scribe. It takes about a year to uh, write a Torah from start to finish. And, um, and welcoming the Torah, the new Torahs, into our community was definitely a very, very special uh, moment and a very joyous one. Um, there's an interesting saying uh, by one of the early... Jewish uh, commentators lived in the 14th century, and he says that uh, our nation, meaning the Jewish nation, is defined by the Torah. All other nations in the world are defined by their land, their borders, their culture, their language. For the Jewish people, for the Jewish nation, what defines us is the Torah. Our mission is to spread the word, right? right. Spread the, the be a document, light, so right? To the teachings of the Torah. Throughout our history, it was large chunks of time. Most of our history, we've been exiled from our land, and yet uh, the Jewish people were able to uh, keep it going. Only 
because of the Torah. The Torah is a very, very special uh, uh, part of Jewish life and of Jewish community. Well, I was, um, you know, you, you see the Torah as a very serious book, and indeed it's, a, it's the most, most sanctified book in the Jewish religion. It's the Old Testament, essentially. Um, serious, serious, but, but the, uh, the congregation was dancing up a storm on Sunday. I never saw so many people dancing for so long. Uh -huh. I saw you dancing. I didn't realize you were young and sprightly like that, uh -huh. Rabbi. You, you, you were dancing for as long as I was there. You kept dancing. <laughs> Well, um, there is a story in the Old Testament where King David, uh, when they uh, welcomed the tablets, that was before the Torah scrolls were written, was written on tablets, and they were uh, going to bring it up to Jerusalem to, um, to put it into the temple. So it says, the book of Kings, that King David danced very feverishly. And his wife thought that was unbecoming of the king to, uh, to behave like that in public. So she rebuked him. And he responded to her by saying that uh, because this was glorifying uh, God, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was something bigger than himself, then it was fully, fully appropriate. So that set the tone for all of the celebrations, subsequent Torah celebrations. It was really interesting to watch. It was, it was infectious. <laughs> you know, everybody was there celebrating the two new Torahs. And now they'll be placed in service now. They'll be in the Ark. Uh, every Saturday you will read from them. Um, I'm looking forward to see, you know, the new energy they bring so let's go to Passover. Passover is coming soon. We need yes. to discuss it. We need yeah. to know what it is. It's a very important holiday. It's a holiday of freedom, of liberation, uh, a celebration of leaving Egypt where we were slaves. So tell us about Passover. Sure. So actually, uh, so this year Passover falls out on Friday evening, April 19th, and it is an eight-day celebration, and it ends Saturday the 27th. And it is not only um, one of the three biblical holidays, because biblically, what we find in the Bible is basically three holidays. Uh, Passover, uh, when we commemorate the exodus of Egypt, the Jewish nation coming out of Egypt. And then there is, uh, in Hebrew, we call Shavuos, which is um, uh, Pentecost, 50 days later when we commemorate the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai mm -hmm. in the desert. And then you have the Feast of the Tabernacle, which is in, in the spring, in uh, September usually, uh, where we go out for seven, eight days, and we rejoice and we sit in this sukkah. Which is in so those are the three holidays, but from the three, Passover is considered the, uh, the most important holiday, and it's it, 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 it's the first of all the holidays. According to the Jewish calendar, as far as the holidays goes, Passover is the first one. Because what happened on Passover is um, is that by our exodus of Egypt wasn't just uh, uh, gaining our freedom, but as we find in the Torah itself, in the Bible, that we emerged as a nation in that exodus. Before that, we were a family, a tribe, tribe, several tribes, Jacob and his 12 children, there were tribes, it was a big, big family. But it was only through the um, crucifix of the exile of Egypt that we, the Jewish people, emerged as a nation. And that's why in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the story of the exodus of Egypt and and uh, our remembering it uh, is the most oft-repeated uh, commandment in the Torah. Even though there are a total of 613 commandments, many other holidays, our exodus of Egypt uh, is like the starting point. Mm. You know, it's one, it's one holiday that has a clearly defined story attached to it, with many, many lessons. 
And there are so many parts of the Haggadah that are memorable and that teach us so much that, and that are repeated every year if you go to Seder. Um, I think, you know, what is uh, really remarkable is that um, uh, you, you go to a Seder, you learn the lesson, and the lesson is reinforced every single year. So if there's one holiday, at least in my experience, that, that sticks in my mind and memory and in terms of what it, what it represents and what it is and what it teaches, and, and the, the various um, you know, ceremonies and rituals that go with the Seder, uh, it's Passover. Right. Passover is special in that way. Right. And um, as everyone knows, that on the first night of Passover, as a matter of fact, the first two nights, the tradition is to have a, what is, we call a Seder. A Seder is the Hebrew word for order because it's an evening uh, that's very structured. The whole meal is very structured. And, uh, and the most important part of it is the whole narrative of, what, of the story of Passover and us retelling that story, and that's called the Haggadah. That is the retelling of it. And that fulfills the commandment uh, in the Bible where it says, and you shall teach it to your children, you shall talk it to your children, and tell it to your children. And that's where the four sons in the Haggadah mm-hmm. come in. And, um, well, that, and that's, the, um, that's, that's one of the messages. That, um, yes, you hear the story. Yes, you go through the Haggadah. You, you go through all the, the statements of what happened. And you say to yourself, I'm sitting here April 19th, 2019, and this ritual has been going on for the Jewish people since Egypt, really. Correct. Uh, so that's a lot of years. And every year it's done again. It's, and it's, so it's not just me. It's my, my ancestors for hundreds of generations back. I'm, I'm in a continuum with all of this. Exactly. And um, so... Passover, the theme that Passover celebrates is the theme of freedom. And in fact, uh, I believe that um, throughout history, the story of Passover, the story of Moses leading the Jewish people out of Egypt, inspired many, many freedom movements throughout different generations. I believe even Martin Luther King referred to you know, Moses taking the Jews uh, into the desert as his calling to lead you know, the people forward. So, How does the expression go? In, in every age? Yes, in, in, in every generation, a person is obligated to see himself as if he himself has gone out of Egypt. It has to be a personal experience. It's not just historical that we commemorate something that happened in the past, but we have to somehow experience it. And um, there's a very, very deep and fascinating insight into this whole idea of Passover. So on a very simple level, on Passover we celebrate the freedom from oppressors. Today, thank God, for the most part, uh, early Jews in, in, in the Western world are not oppressed. We live in freedom, and we're allowed to, to do the things we want to do. But um, oppression not only comes from without, uh, it could come from within. When, when a person is enslaved to, uh, to one's ego, certain habits, uh, in a sense we lose our freedom. And the idea of Passover is to liberate ourselves uh, from this enslavement, from the inner the inner enslavement, and actually, actually explained in Jewish mysticism that um, in Hebrew, Egypt is called Mitzrayim, the going out of Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is the Hebrew word for the nation of Egypt, the country of Egypt. In Hebrew, the word Mitzrayim also means limitation. Interesting. And the idea it's is... taken that on over the years. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the idea is that we all have limitations. We all have things that hold us back from fully uh, expressing our, ourselves, fully realizing our potential. Limitations could be of an intellectual nature, whether it's doubt or 
things like that. Or it can be on an emotional level, fear and or many other kinds of emotions. And the idea of the whole idea of Passover is to liberate oneself to transcend these limitations, mm. to rise above these limitations. We're going to uh, take a short break, Rabbi. It's Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski of Chabad of Hawaii. We're talking about Passover, a very important holiday. It has so much significance, not only to the Jewish people that celebrated at Seder, but to the whole world. It's about Exodus. It's about avoiding slavery of all kinds. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. We're back. We're live. We're here with uh, Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski. He's the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii, and we're talking about Passover, which is coming soon. So, Rabbi, let's let's talk a little about the um, about setting up for Passover, cleaning house, so to speak, for Passover. And I would like to talk to you about the seder itself. Sure. So, just like the basics, the one on one of Passover uh, during the Jewish holiday of Passover, the Torah. Jewish the Old Testament prohibits us from eating any chametz. Chametz means leavened bread. Any any bread that, that the dough has risen and it turns into bread or cake, uh, that's prohibited to eat on Passover. And and this is because this is because when the Jewish people left Egypt after God uh, broke the will and spirit of Pharaoh, who was the uh, evil king at the time who enslaved the Jewish people. It says the Jewish people, they ran out they, so quickly that there was no time for the breads that they were baking for their provisions on the way to rise. So they ate it as, ate, baked it and ate it as matzah, matzah meaning like a cracker. So till this day, the highlight of the, of the obser observance of Passover at the Seder and throughout Passover is that instead of eating bread, we eat matzah. But it's because, for example, today, most of the foods that we eat are, um, are derivatives of, of you know, all different kinds of ingredients. So pasta, for example, is also would be hummus because it is wheat uh, from, the, from the grains and mixed with water. So all of that is, uh, is put aside, and on Passover, we bring out the Passover foods. Uh, but it's not only that the Torah doesn't allow us to eat uh, bread on Passover, but we not let even possess any bread on Passover. And hence the uh, intense Passover cleaning that goes on in all Jewish homes before Passover, where the house is thoroughly cleaned uh, from any leaven or leavened bread or just cleaned in general. And Sounds like spring cleaning spring in a cleaning, way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, um, and uh, you know, and, and th that's the setting in the, for the preparations of Passover. And, and the reason is that we want to remember what it was like when we, when we left Egypt on short notice. Right. And that's why the matzah is eaten. Also, it's brought down, and we say it in the Haggadah, that the matzah is the, is the poor man's bread. 
And therefore, we do many things on the night of Passover, on the Seder night, to remind us of that part of our history when we were enslaved. And at the same time, we, are, we eat reclined, because that's a symbol of, of, uh, of freedom. You slide yeah. back on your right. chair. Right. Okay. And so we celebrate both our freedom and remember our humble beginnings. And that's why we eat matzah. That's the, also the reason there are many, many foods that we eat on, on, on Passover night at the Seder. They are there just to remind us of, this, of the experience of our ancestors in Egypt. And that's why we eat the bitter herbs, the moror, which reminds us of the bitterness uh, of the slavery. All kinds of symbolic foods, all to remind you of the story of Passover. Right. And also, as the commentators explain, by, by eating certain foods, we somehow, we, uh, in a very concrete way, we take it from the abstract and, and, and history into something tangible and real. And with, with, it's tactile, has a taste. <laughs> and you can remember the taste of the haros said, you can remember yes. the taste of the bitter herbs. And, and that takes you back to your memory. It's Proustian. It takes you back to your memory, even when you were a child, thinking of the continuum I mentioned. This helps you sort of integrate the whole experience for all these generations, because everyone has tasted the morar, morar over all these years. Everyone has tasted the roset over right. all these years. And, and this memory, this collective memory of the Jewish people, is really at the heart of, of the living Judaism, because there is this common memory that we all share, even, even those of the generation like ours that did not experience it that way. So Two sets of dishes. I remember that. So you have your regular, four sets of dishes. What am I saying? It's four sets of dishes. Regular Jewish household, you have dishes for the meat and the dishes for the for dairy. Da dairy. And you don't mix them up. But on Passover, you trot out another two sets of dishes, Correct. Correct. one for the meat on Passover Correct. without any chometz, and one for the dairy without any chometz. Right. So a good Jewish household, I'm sure an Orthodox Jewish household, four sets of dishes. Yeah. Correct. Correct. <laughs> and the reason for that is because according to um, Jewish law, um, uh, China, earthenware, it cannot be kosher because once it absorbs, Something it doesn't spit it back out. If you have a glass plate, actually not glass, glass is a, is a question. But if you have a um, pin, or if you have, um, you know, um, I don't know if you have metal things, but metal can be kosher, but uh, china cannot be kosher. That's why the whole it absorbs the food. Yeah, the whole the whole uh, new new set of dishes. And there's, um, gee, there's so many parts to the Seder. I, I hope we can regroup um, on some of them and, sure. um, you know, explain them. But the one, the one that I, I did want to catch before we, we had to close the show uh, is the one about the four children. Right. Um, because uh, there's a description of four Son. sons, four profiles of sons, right. and they're all different, and you treat them differently. Right. Uh, can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah, that is the highlight of the Seder, and that is that because the Torah says that our primary responsibility on this holiday is to pass it on, to teach it to your children, and, and in the Jewish experience, uh, the way to teach is interactive. It's not just you talking and your children listening, but, but the interaction between parents and the children. So it begins with a question, it's a question and answer, it's a dialogue. And the children, you know, there's four sons, there's the wise son, there's the wicked son, there is the uh, simple, simple child, and then there's a child who doesn't even know what to ask. <laughs> and, uh, and the Torah tells us that you need to speak to each child uh, on their level. There's no uniform uh, message you can give uh, to all the children. Every child is different, and every child has is <coughs> uh, needs to be addressed um, directly 
And this is the difference between the, the four sons. And as you just said before, during the break, that on a deeper level, we, we all embody within us the four sons. We're we all, all have a little piece of each one of the four. We're all a little wise, we're all a little rebellious, <laughs> and we're all a, a little clueless, <laughs> and we're all a little indifferent. And, uh, and what the whole message is, is that there is no child <coughs> that's beyond reach. There's no person that is beyond reach. Every person can be reached. I, I remember another aspect of the Bill Rapp, if I can share with you. Okay. You know, when I was a kid, each time, you know, the Seder went through the four children. I said, gee, I, I, don't, I don't want to be the wicked son. Bad idea. I don't want to be the simple son. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, I don't want to be the, you know, the, uh, what was the other one? The, the one who doesn't even know how to ask. Right, don't even know what to ask. I want to be the wise son. I hope I'm the wise son. I have to strive to be the wise son. And I have to exclude the other three possibilities from the way I live. And I remember, you see, I wouldn't want anybody to think I was a simple son. <laughs> and in fact, you know, the way it's set up is that the people at the table in the Seder, you know, they rotate the readings. So somebody is assigned to read the story of the wise son, somebody, you know, the simple son, somebody, the, the wicked son, somebody who doesn't know that. I don't want any of the readings except the wise son. <laughs> That's the one I want to read. <laughs> and uh, you're correct. Firstly, um, as we as we all know, that the the seder evening, you know, is geared towards the children. The children play the most central role, not only in the questions but the stealing of the afikoman, which uh, I'm sure you remember. Yes, I do. But you have <laughs> to tell the people what that means. Yeah, the the afikoman is uh, the last piece of matzah that's eaten before the conclusion of the Seder. It's, a, it's a, actually a Greek word, which means like dessert. And it commemorates the sacrifice that was uh, brought during the temple on Passover. There was a Paschal lamb that was sacrificed. And so the custom is to engage the children, that the children, and you have to eat that piece of afikoman in order to be able to conclude the Seder. So the kids, you know, so the, the, the leader, the, the head of the household hides the afikoman. And uh, any of the children that are able to find it, uh, they, you know, they can ask a high ransom for that uh, piece of matzah. So that's a very... Uh, yeah, there's usually a little, little money involved. Yeah, a gift. You know, they ask for a gift. A little gift. <laughs> the idea of uh, one last thought in this, that um, on Passover, as you mentioned before, the leavened bread is prohibited and the, and the matzah is what's eaten. That's the staple of food. Passover. In the, in the spiritual sense, bread, dough that rises, represents ego, arrogance. The matzah, that just flour and water, that doesn't rise and is, and is needed before 18 minutes, it doesn't rise, yes, yeah, so the dough doesn't rise, that represents humility. And ego is, is really the culprit uh, and the cause of enslavement. When a, person, when a person is ruled by their ego, they're in fact like a slave to their to ego, themselves. literally yeah. a slave to themselves. Yeah. And it says in the Torah, we know that the most uh, famous, prominent figure in the entire Torah is Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. And he was the first of the Jewish leaders. He took us out of Egypt. He gave us the Torah. But there's only one single uh, description about his character in the Torah. And that is that he was the most humble man of all people. So Moshe, Moses symbolizes humility, took us out of Egypt, which is caused by arrogance, the, 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 the being puffed up, which is personified by Pharaoh. Rabbi, we have miles to go before we finish our discussion of Passover. You talk about going out of Egypt, there's the Red Sea. There's passing through the Red Sea. We have to know more about that. There's the four questions of fear conscious. Yes. We have to know more about that. Uh, we have to talk about the songs. Yes. We, have to have a, a, we have to have a discussion about the visit of Elijah, yes. where you open the door and yes. sing for Elijah. Yes. There's so many things in the Seder, Correct. so many things. And, we, and we, we should talk about the Haggadah as, as a piece of literature. Yes. 
because it's been rewritten many times. Yeah, exactly. And it goes in so many directions. Yeah, and not, not only that, but it is the it is the most singular Jewish text that has has more editions printed than any other Jewish text. And there's even uh, there was a movie out several years ago called um, the Haggadah of uh, Sarajevo, the Sarajevo Haggadah. It's about uh, um, a person who finds a Haggadah in his attic, and uh, it's a family Haggadah from passed down from parent grandparents. And you know, like in a typical Haggadah, the stains here and sure. there's wine. Those stains. are the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> and the Haggadah serves as you know in this movie where this person, re, you know, relives or researches the family history of, you know, going back generations. Yeah. It's fascinating. Through, through the Haggadah, yeah, the stains, that. what have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's, again, it's Proust, Marcel Proust, and the Petit, uh, Petit Madeleine, how you open your, your whole life, and you can see those, those other generations. Well, thank you, Rabbi. Hey, this if is I can only say, the beginning. If I can just, yes, uh, one thing, I just want to invite everyone who sees this, Chabad, we're going to have public seders where everyone is invited to come. Just call Chabad at 808-735-8061. We also have public seders all throughout the islands. Everyone is invited to come, or if you need any other help related to Passover, please reach out to us. Celebrate freedom. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.